ko Taranaki nui te maunga, ko Teihe nui te awa, ko Pākehā te iwi, ko Mari tōku ingoa, tēnā koto, tēnā koto, tēnā koto katoa. My name is Murray Cox. I grew up in Taranaki, between the mountain and the sea. I went to high school there before moving down to Otago for university. I then spent many years living and working overseas in Europe, uh, the UK, the United States. Just over a decade ago, I came back to New Zealand and took up a job at Massey University, where I later became a professor of computational biology. That field, computational biology, sits at the intersection of genetics, computer science, and statistics. It didn't really exist when I was a student, so I was fortunate to be part of creating a new field as it was developing. Because biologists who can do quantitative analysis have been quite rare, and in many ways still are, I've had amazing opportunities to work on a whole range of very different questions. But I have always been fascinated by the genetics and prehistory of the Pacific region. And perhaps some of my most interesting work has been done in that area. The thing about the Pacific is that people tend not to understand just how big it is. If you take a globe of the world and you spin it just the right way, the Pacific fills an entire hemisphere. Islands Southeast Asia a region dominated today by the modern country of Indonesia, was ultimately the springboard for the settlement of that broader Pacific region. And island Southeast Asia, and Indonesia in particular, is where I have focused most of my research attention. Indonesia is also typically underestimated in the popular imagination. If you superimpose the country on a map of Europe, it spans from the westernmost tip of Spain all the way to the Caspian Sea. When placed over the United States, it sticks out over both coasts, into the Atlantic and the Pacific. With nearly 300 million people, Indonesia is the world's fourth largest country by population, after China, India, and the United States. And it is culturally extremely diverse. Nearly a quarter of all languages present in the world are spoken there, and yet, very little is known about the genetics of its people. This is nothing new. One of the first studies on human genetics undertaken anywhere in the world was done in Indonesia. That work was published in 1924. But for most of the 20th century, genetic research, and especially that related to healthcare, has focused mostly on Europeans. When it comes to human genetics today, over 80% of the genomes that have been sequenced come from people with European ancestry. Of the rest, most are from just two Asian countries, China and Japan. Less than 0.3% of a percent come from people living in island Southeast Asia and the Pacific. Over 20 years ago, I had the good fortune to partner with an amazing team of Indonesian researchers at that time, Indonesia was a developing country, and it is perhaps fair to say that Indonesian science was just beginning to grow. I'm amazed and incredibly pleased by how far it has come. Many of my good friends, colleagues and students are now major players in what is increasingly a vibrant modern science system. Much of our early work together involved characterising the sheer diversity of people living across island Southeast Asia and particularly Indonesia. The first human genome, of course of a European, was published in 2001. It took another 15 years before the first Indonesian genome sequence appeared. In 2016, our team published the first three genomes in a paper in Nature. Three years later, in 2019, we increased that by an order of magnitude when we published the first survey of genomic diversity across the entire Indonesian archipelago. That paper appeared in Cell. Since then, we have been actively pushing to improve genomic resources for underrepresented communities across island Southeast Asia and the Pacific. 
our understanding of regional genetics is now proceeding at pace. We know that there is regional structure in DNA methylation and gene expression patterns. In other words, the genetic diversity we observe has real physical effects. We know that many communities experience gene-environment interactions, which means we need to consider not just the genetic variation that people carry, but also the ways and environments in which they live. And we know that genetic variation acquired from a series of quite different ancestors affects how genes work in modern life too. Perhaps the most fascinating discovery is just how important a role genetic variation from archaic hominins plays. Europeans carry genetic variants from Neanderthals. So too do people in Southeast Asia and the Pacific, but they also have a genetic legacy from another archaic hominin, Denisovans, a sister group to Neanderthals. One of our most important findings is that many of the genetic variants inherited from Denisovans strongly affect the health of people living today. New clinical treatments have since been developed to help address some of these healthcare issues. So, while it may appear that my work has largely involved studying the past, it has always felt to me that it is much more about understanding the complexity of how people live their lives today. If my science does look at history, then it is at least very much a living history. In two years' time, the field of island Southeast Asian and Pacific genetics will be celebrating its centenary. We've come a long way, especially in the last few years, and it's been a genuine honour to be part of that amazing journey. I can't help but hope, though, that the best work is yet to come.